In the past, colonizing another planet or moon was seen as something inevitable. Most had their eyes on Mars because it posed the least challenge for humans to establish a self-sustaining colony. Still a challenge nonetheless. However, they were correct in an inverse way. 150 years after we've safely landed the first operational probe, Viking 1 on Mars, humanity was able to colonize all of the rocky planets and a handful of moons. But Mars was not on that list. Suffice to say, Earth acted as one voice for a change, one strong voice when it came to exploring the solar system. The most interesting and important thing about this exploration and colonization is that we were motivated, highly motivated, motivated to the point where we were willing to spread our resources really thin to achieve this fast expansion into space. But without this expansion, we wouldn't be here today on Enceladus. We're here at Carl, Cousteau Aquatic Research Labs. It's located on a plateau five kilometers under the Herschel Ice Sheet, which itself is three kilometers thick at this location. There's a colony of about a thousand people on the surface of the ice, but that's not our home of operation. We're a team of just five that are searching for life in the ocean, but so far, we have nothing. We have some leads, but nothing substantial at this time. Most of the time, we just watch over our robotic craft as they explore the ocean, collect and analyze organic materials. If they find a new organic material, the computer would alert us and we will do additional analysis on that compound. We've been doing this for two years now, so we already found most of the easy stuff. We get a hit about once every three months now, so that's plenty of time to do other things that's not related to work. In my case, it's about going to the surface and watching the points of lights in the sky disappear into the void of Saturn's dark side. Knowing that a few of those points of light are human colonies made me think of the reason we're here in the first place. Not just under the ice or even Enceladus, but the reason humanity had to expand so quickly into the solar system. I started thinking about the events that motivated us to colonize not one or even two worlds, but eight. A lot of worlds in a short amount of time. There are many stories behind these events. It's hard to say which ones are true, but I tend to go with the ones that have the most documented scientific evidence. So what were the events that motivated our expansion into space? Well. According to the evidence on the record, we have to go back about a hundred years to a particular date. And so, it begins. Sky team maneuver has started. About 20 meters off the surface. The date is 18 February 2021. Space enthusiasts should know this date. The Mars 2020 mission just delivered Perseverance from Earth to the surface of Mars. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. But while everyone was celebrating the success, something went missing. Something big went missing. Something like an entire comet. This is Comet P2019 LD2. When this comet was first discovered in 2019, it was thought to be a Jupiter Trojan asteroid with a comet like tail. A Trojan asteroid is an asteroid that shares the same orbit as its host planet. In this case, it's Jupiter. They're located at the L4 and L5 Lagrange points. I'll explain these Lagrange points later. After observing this asteroid for a longer period, it became clear that its orbit was too unstable for it to be a Jupiter-Trojan asteroid. And with its comet-like tail, 
it was reclassified as a comet that was orbiting the sun. But even with longer observations, its orbit was still deemed somewhat unstable for a comet, meaning it would drift significantly for every revolution around the sun. The size was estimated at 14 kilometers in diameter. Considering the distance from Earth and the size of the comet, using radar reflections to measure its size is not an effective method. So instead, the absolute magnitude or brightness of a comet can be and was used to get a rough size. This method of computing the size of the comet is important to note because it offers a potential explanation to the disappearing of the comet on 18 February 2021 and why the few astronomers that were tracking it didn't think it was a big deal. Because the size of the comet is based on its brightness, it's possible to get the wrong size if material composition and hence reflectivity is extremely different than expected. In addition, a collision with a big enough object could deposit or eject materials on or from the surface of the comet, causing its reflectivity to change. How likely is that? Unlikely, but reasonably possible. All these speculations became moot, however, eight months later when a new comet was detected approaching Mars. Its size, based on its brightness, was also estimated at 14 kilometers. Initially, this was not too concerning for NASA, ESA, and ISRO, which all had orbiters around Mars at that time. They were already familiar with this kind of close encounter. In 2014, Comet C 2013-A1, commonly known as Sighting Spring, flew past Mars at a close distance of 140,000 kilometers. During that encounter, NASA moved its orbiter to the other side of Mars to minimize the possibility of being hit by dust from the comet's tail. So when this new comet was detected, similar actions were taken. And because of this, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, or MRO, did not capture images for three to four hours of this comet, which by this time was believed to be the missing comet P2019LD2. This was the comet's closest approach. So when MRO did capture an image, the comet was more than 50% dimmer, making its diameter, based on its brightness, shrink from 14 kilometers to 9 kilometers in just a few hours. This sudden dimming was puzzling to astronomers once again. But before they could speculate about the cause of this latest dimming, things took an interesting turn. InSight, the NASA seismic detector, detected a strong Mars quake originating 600 kilometers away in the direction of Gill Crater. Now, Gill Crater happens to be the crater that NASA's Curiosity was exploring. The data from InSight indicated that the center of the quake was at the surface. Based on the signature of the quake's waveform, it was caused by a meteorite impact. As a meteor goes through the atmosphere of a planet at hypersonic speed, a shock wave is created. This shock wave hits the ground first and creates a small quake. Shortly after, the meteor hits the ground, creating a series of quakes. This sequence of quakes is unique to meteorite impact. In addition, the InSight data suggested that the impact crater would be about 100 meters in diameter. Since this was the very first time that InSight detected a meteorite impact, it was exciting news for NASA. A newly formed crater can reveal valuable information about the subsurface of Mars. In fact, right before InSight landed on Mars in 2018, NASA used the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, or MRO, to gather images in a 5,000 square kilometer area centered around the landing site. So anytime a meteorite impact is detected near InSight, MRO can fly over that area, take new pictures, and compare them with the ones from the past. A newly formed crater will stand out if it's big enough the recent impact detected with an estimated diameter of 100 meters is definitely big enough. But yet, when MRO flew over the suspected impact site, no impact crater was visible. The initial attempts were made using the context camera on the MRO. 
This device has a resolution of 6 meters per pixel from a 300 kilometer altitude. Subsequent attempts were then made using the high-rise camera with a resolution of 1 meter per pixel. But this also came up empty-handed. With no impact crater found, a few scientists were thinking that this may have been an airburst event, similar to what happened in the Chelyabinsk meteor event in Russia in 2013. That meteorite never reached the ground, but instead exploded in the air. But this shouldn't happen on Mars, because its atmosphere is much thinner than Earth's atmosphere. Well, MRO, being an important spacecraft for communication, imaging, and delivering weather report from Mars, had to return to those duties. There are many mysteries on Mars that are still unresolved. Mysteries like the potential finding of life by Viking 1, or the cause of global Martian dust storms. We may never find the answer to these mysteries, but there are many more mysteries we will solve. So, the mystery of the missing impact crater was just one more item that we added to the Mars mystery list and then moved on with the normal observation of Mars. At least, that was the plan. But things didn't turn out that way, and once again, things took an interesting turn. A few weeks after the quake was detected, Mars Express, an ESA spacecraft, started noticing something unusual. The increase in dust devil tracks in regions that were never detected before. A few days later, MRO, Mars Odyssey, MOM, and Tianwen-1 were all detecting dust devil tracks. Dust devils are strong and relatively short-lived whirlwinds or vortexes of air. They can range from a few meters to up to 700 meters in diameter. As they move across the surface of Mars, they blow away the thin layer of bright dust, revealing the underlying darker surface. These exposed surfaces will then become bright again in about a week or so of exposure to sunlight in the Martian atmosphere. So the presence of these tracks point to the recent increase in dust devil activities on Mars. Since these tracks last about two weeks, orbiters were able to track them to their origin. All of them led back to Gale Crater, specifically Aeolus Mons, the center bulge inside of Gale Crater, and the origin of the Mars quake detected by InSight about a month ago. How they form so fast is unknown, but what is known is that no dust devil track has ever been detected going up the wall of a crater, but these ones did. 80 tracks were detected, all starting from Aeolus Mons and radiating well outside of the rim of Gale Crater. These tracks were all measured to be between 200 and 250 kilometers in length. Before that, they were usually less than 5 kilometers. Now, here's a phenomenon that's unfolding that piqued the interest of every single space agency on Earth. <laughs>